Good morning, and also good afternoon or good evening, as I know we have some people joining us from around the world. And welcome to this Nigel Frank webinar uh, titled How to Stand Out as a Dynamics Candidate as the Demand for Great Professionals Increases. My name is Michael Day, Senior Vice President here at Nigel Frank, and I'm pleased to be hosting this event. Every year, we survey thousands of professionals of all levels across the Dynamics ecosystem to find out you know, what makes them tick and keep our finger firmly on the pulse in terms of market trends. It's the most uh, comprehensive independent survey of Microsoft professionals and those working within the Dynamics ecosystem anywhere in the world, you know, which really puts us in a great position to advise Dynamics professionals on, on what companies and their hiring managers are looking for and what they, you know, they need to be doing to stand out from their peers. You know, from the most in-demand products to why Dynamics professionals want to move employers. You know, this is an incredibly detailed snapshot of the world you're working in. And I'm, you know, really excited to be able to present some of the key findings from it to you. Um, you know, if, if you have any questions at all as we move through this presentation, you know, please feel free to type them into the chat box and we'll address them during the Q&A at the end. All right, so you know, let's begin by telling you a little bit about ourselves. I've been uh, in the technology space for over 20 years. I began my career with a startup software business, and you know, after eight years, left to join Ernst and Young's IT audit and security practice, which was, you know, the complete other end of the spectrum. You know, I then uh, needed to find a balance of the corporate and entrepreneurial. So I ended up um, in staffing and uh, at Robert Half Technology, which was the beginning of my recruiting career 13 years ago. I've been focused on technology staffing ever since. And, you know, I was really happy to join Nigel Frank 11 months ago to lead our permanent placement business across the U.S. and Canada. Um, Nancy, I'll pass it over to you. Hi, I am Nancy Tandy. I am the Senior Business Strategy Manager here at Microsoft. I do all of the go-to marketing for business applications. So I think about training and certifications for Dynamics 365 as well as Power Platform. So uh, just to let you know today's schedule, firstly, I'll let you know who we are, Nigel Frank, and what we do. I'll tell you a little bit more about the salary survey itself how we compile it and the work that goes into producing it. And then most importantly, we'll go through um, those key findings from the survey and how they affect you as a job seeker, um, what it shows you need to do to stand out. Uh, so whether you're actively looking for a new role, maybe have your eye on progressing or potentially looking in the next 12 months, I'll cover some of the things that are really worth uh, taking into consideration as you look towards your next uh, great dynamics role. So, you know, I'm sure if you've managed to find this webinar, you already know about us. Um, for those who don't, here's a quick overview as to who we are and what Nigel Frank does. You know, firstly, we're a dedicated Microsoft recruitment company. We don't work with any other technology. This is all that we do. Uh, day in, day out, we work solely recruiting Microsoft professionals. You know, we live and breathe the ecosystem. We understand it better than any other recruiter on the planet, actually. And since 2006, we've placed over 12,500 Microsoft professionals across thousands of organizations. You know, so no matter uh, what your background is, where you might like to work, or your circumstances, you know, we have experience of your situation, um, you know, where you've been and where you want to be. From uh, subject matter experts, enterprise, and Fortune 500 companies to ISVs and partners, We've worked with thousands of different organizations. You know, we really know the marketplace better than anyone. Um, we have more than 500 consultants working across the globe, working only with Microsoft Dynamics. Now, that's more than 10 times the size of our nearest competitor. Uh, we have 17 offices across eight countries and four different continents. So we don't just know your market. Uh, we're a global operation. We arranged uh, 42,000 interviews in 2019 alone. Uh, that's essentially one Microsoft professional attending an interview arranged by Nigel Frank every 90 seconds. Uh, we also offer interview training and preparation to make sure you're best placed to land your dream role. 
Uh, we can assist you with relocation options as well as offering ongoing support to make sure you're happy in your new role. In fact, 85% of candidates we place remain with their employer for more than two years. In short, uh, we're pretty well placed to advise you on the marketplace when it comes to Microsoft Dynamics. All right, as I mentioned earlier, um, our salary survey is the largest independent uh, survey of Microsoft professionals anywhere on the planet. You know, this is the 12th year running that we've surveyed people working within the Dynamics ecosystem of all levels uh, to gauge their thoughts and feelings on the issues that affect them, the products they use, the trends on the platform, the things that motivate and demotivate them and cause them to move employers as well as taking anonymized uh, salary survey information so that we can get the most accurate picture of what people working with Dynamics around the world are earning and should be earning. In total, we analyzed 239,000 different data points to be able to present this to you. So, you know, obviously it's not just something we hastily put together. Uh, this is an industry leading um, you know, initiative that takes an incredibly uh, comprehensive view of those working on the front line with uh, Dynamics. It includes a, a city by city salary breakdown as well. Uh, so you can make sure that wherever you are, whatever you do, um, you know, you can be, uh, you know, certain that you're, you're fairly paid for the work you do. You know, you can also see the sort of benefits your peers are receiving. Uh, what they're doing to stand out in terms of certifications, uh, the workloads they have, and the issues affecting them. And in short, it's, it's the most comprehensive resource anywhere in, in the world that will tell you what it's like working with Dynamics, which allows you to put yourself front and center uh, when looking for your next dream job. You know, rather than continue just to tell you why it's so great, let me move on and talk you through some of the key findings from this year's salary survey and how it affects you. Uh, specifically as a dynamics professional. All right, so you know let's let's start out with what the average person working within the ecosystem looks like in terms of experience. I think it's also quite interesting to see the different products people have uh, worked with before coming to dynamics. But as you can see, there's quite a spread in terms of general tech background with attending, to average, um, you know, between six and 20 years. You know, but it's clear there's a good mix in terms of background when it comes to the platform, uh, from those organically moving towards specializing into Dynamics as their career progresses, to those at both ends of the spectrum, old and new, that have seen the potential of the cloud and the uh, demand for specialists within it, and uh, looked at a career within Dynamics either from the very beginning or towards, you know, perhaps the end. In terms of experience uh, of Dynamics itself, the overwhelming majority of people entering have at least a year's experience of the platform. And, you know, generally speaking, it averages higher than that again. So if you're at the lower end of the spectrum in terms of how long you've been working with it, then you really need to pay attention to what's going to make you stand out when it comes to applying for new roles. You know, first of all, of course, it's going to be self-development. So let's start with that, in particular uh, certifications. All right, first of all, you know, it's important to understand why certifications matter. You know, here's what some of our respondents and people that we work alongside have told us. You know, the first is that it's, it's tangible evidence of your commitment to learning about Microsoft Dynamics. You know, having a list of skills on your resume is easy to exaggerate or, or uh, embellish uh, in an interview, but studying for a certification and passing an exam is much more difficult to talk your way through. It's more black and white, you know it or you don't. You know, we'll cover a little later how important soft skills, um, such as a, a hunger to learn are to have and to be able to demonstrate. And certifications you know, are the number one way of doing this. You know, it also counts towards, you know, a company becoming a Microsoft Gold or, or Silver partner. So, again, depending on the company's pathway and vision, it could be an extremely important part of their hiring process. You know, that's not to say that every business will have certs at the top of their list of requirements. But if a company wants them to help their own partner status 
then it's 100% going to make you stand out against one of your peers. And, you know, perhaps most obviously, it's the best way of staying up to date with the platform and seeing how it functions in different practical situations. You know, if you want to learn something to do with Dynamics, it stands to reason that Microsoft's own learning program is the most verifiable way of doing this. Uh, so let's look at the most uh, popular certifications that, you know, our respondents held. Obviously, it's, it's difficult for us to suggest which certifications you should be studying for, as it depends entirely on the area you want to go into. You know, but here's an idea of the most popular certs that our respondents held, as well as those that they're now studying for. You know, they cover a number of roles and plenty of candidates have more than one cert. You know, so it's always worth bearing in mind that a certification is just the beginning of your journey rather than the culmination of it. And once you've started, you should always be looking at what's next, and a good employer should be helping to facilitate that. And while the older Microsoft certifications are the most commonly held certs, you know, we know that many people have spent their, their time in lockdown or on furlough studying and getting up to speed on the latest certs. So we also expect these numbers to change quite significantly in the future. And this is definitely one area of the survey where I'd, I'd suggest uh, getting ahead of the curve. Across all technologies, certifications are becoming more and more important. And while more than half of the respondents this year held at least one cert, you know, I think in another 12 months, that number will rise sharply. There were only 30% uh, actually of dynamics professionals this year who said they didn't hold a cert and weren't studying for one either. You know, that percentage will decrease massively as we emerge from lockdown restrictions and, and head back into the office. So you're going to be uh, in the bottom third in terms of applicants, you know, to even lower down the list uh, uh, in, in another year's time if you aren't at that very uh, least, uh, you know, studying for them now. Um, as you can see, across the whole spectrum of the Dynamics ecosystem, certifications matter. They make you stand out. They demonstrate your knowledge as well as your desire to improve. Um, that's not just us saying it. It's not just your peers saying it. Um, and 68% of employers have fully funded employee certs. So finding those that support your development is, is not like looking for a needle in a haystack. If your employer isn't contributing towards the cost of starting your certification, or at least allowing you time for self-directed learning, it's worth thinking about whether to make that investment in your career and your, yourself. So if you're unable to start uh, on the certification journey, then, then self-learning is going to be vital to arming yourself with the skills you need to stand out. You know, here are some resources where people are going to learn more about dynamics and, and stay up to date. Obviously, if you're an experienced professional, uh, you'll likely be doing this already. Although hopefully there may be a few ideas on here for new places that you can go to for, for learning resources. But if you're a little less experienced, I really can't stress um, enough how important uh, self-learning is. While employers are looking closely at hard skills, you know, so things like the certifications you have, you know, they're, they're quantifiable. Soft skills, you know, such as a hunger to improve and develop, uh, wanting to learn more and self-study are incredibly desirable and harder to demonstrate. So if you're able to go through these resources and, you, and your progress within them, that's a huge head start. To put it into perspective, we found that half of employers paid for their employee certifications in full, uh, with more contributing in one way or another towards the cost of them. So while certifications are certainly desirable for a candidate to have, if you have those soft skills, then employers will be willing to invest in you. Using your own time to invest in your skill set will make you a better professional. It will make you a more attractive candidate. And perhaps most importantly, it will also increase your earning potential, which we'll look at next. So this question was aimed at increasing your earning potential, but you know, I still think it's, it's pertinent uh, you know, as a pointer of how to stand out as a candidate on the Dynamics job market in particular. And, and you'll see from this you know, just how important certifications are when it comes to increasing your worth. Also, you know, looking at it here, you know, the vertical you're working makes a difference. So being stuck in what feels like a, a rut somewhere within a sector doesn't always mean that you need to fall out of love with that and look elsewhere. 
It's actually a strength that can make you more desirable and result in a really positive outcome for you. One thing we experience regularly from candidates is that they, you know, they work, say, in the financial sector and, you know, they're dissatisfied with an employer. So the first thing they say to us is I, I need to get out of this industry when actually, you know, they've they have a specific type of knowledge that applies to that sector. You know, that's really desirable to other employers who can offer them, you know, what they're looking for. Um, understandably, you know, experience will undoubtedly play a part in this, but also exposure to large projects does as well. So if you feel, you know, you're undervalued or potentially overworked in your current role, or even, you know, just not, uh, you know, paid according to the responsibilities you have, then make sure your resume reflects the work that you do. If you're essentially covering two or three other roles, make sure those skills and tasks are reflected. And similarly, you know, if, if you've been exposed to a really big project, uh, detail what was involved. You know, it all depends, uh, you know, on what you, you know you want for your next move. But plenty of people move from an under-resourced team in a large enterprise to a smaller organization that will appreciate the breadth of expertise um, you can bring to a role and compensate you accordingly. So it might not be a case of standing out as a candidate on that front, but it's certainly something worth considering when you're looking to move on, uh, is that actually your experience in a specific sector is really desirable beyond you just being a dynamics professional. But on the subject of job satisfaction, you know, let's, let's take a quick look at that now. All right, I, I think it's worth us um, quickly looking at what causes dissatisfaction in the workplace. You know, I think it's useful to know what's affecting your peers, how they feel. You know, it's, it's no use with us, you know, suggesting one thing when every single person is feeling the same way. So you'll see that people are generally happy with their working environment, hours, uh, work-life balance, company culture. And certainly when we emerge from the current situation we're in with COVID, you know, I expect that more companies will be offering better working hours, uh, remote work options, making those things at the bottom of the list stand out even more. People are, you know, already dissatisfied with the training options available to them, which perhaps, you know, makes it even more important that you make a start on this now under your own steam, rather than laying, laying out that, you know, prospective uh, new employer's door. You know, if, if you can demonstrate your desire and hunger to learn and develop into something more tangible beyond just words at an interview, then you're really going to stand out as a candidate. Um, you know, when it comes to that progression and around training. So, you know, when we uh, then look at the reasons people are looking to move on, you, know, you can see that people want new challenges and better career prospects, as, as well as being exposed to the latest products. You know, so this is a pain point for other potential job seekers that you'll be competing with. I think it's great to have an ecosystem filled with professionals who are hungry to improve. Um, as a recruiter, it's fantastic for us. Um, that that's what the candidates we, we work with want. But for a job seeker, it means wanting it isn't enough to stand out. So, you know, if your employer isn't supporting you towards certifications and you can't make that investment yourself, then look at the other resources that you can use to increase your knowledge base and track what you've learned. Uh, because the desire to know them won't make you stand out compared to actually acting on it and starting to increase your range under your own uh, steam. With that in mind, you know, let's look at which skills the dynamics professionals should possess. So these are the most used dynamics products around the ecosystem. Uh, my guess is that a lot of these will be familiar to most of you, but if you're thinking about certifications and where to begin or products that you can maybe start to brush up on, this is a really useful list. You know, it's also a good indicator that if you've perhaps pinpointed an area that you want to focus on, you know, it might not actually be used that much and may be worth a, a rethink. Um, but I think more than anything, these are the most used products within Dynamics. And so they're the ones that employers are perhaps going to be asking us if candidates possess or, or will be mentioned in job ads. And if a, an employer is just scanning skills and products and you don't have what they need, 
you know, it's an area where you're perhaps going to fall through the gaps and be missed out on. Um, so I'd really recommend looking at these products and investing time into learning those you're unfamiliar with. Certainly those that are at the top of the list or, or perhaps most suited to your vertical or um, where you'd like to work. There's also information in the survey, as you can see, on the products most used and in demand from both partners and end users. So again, I can't stress enough how in-depth the study this is, whether you want a brief overview or to dig deep into the specifics. And perhaps most importantly of all is a list of the, of the uh, Dynamics products that organizations are planning on upgrading to. So if you want to get ahead of the curve and really stand out, you know, these are the products that I'd suggest you uh, get started on now, because while a business may be looking for a hire based on what they, they need now, they'll also have an eye on the future. And if they know some of these products are in the pipeline and you have them in your armory, it's going to uh, make you much more valuable to them. I know that there's a lot of information on this slide. So what I will say, folks, once again, you know, is that this is all taken directly from the pages of the salary survey. You know, so if you're scurrying to take notes, please don't worry. The information in this presentation is all available in the salary survey itself. And I'm more than happy to connect with you at the end of this webinar if there's something I've said that you feel you've missed or in the, uh, the Q&A at the end. So away from the specific product aspects, you know, here's what else employers are looking for from you in terms of hard and soft skills. So if you're a hardened techie with say a decade's worth of experience, but maybe aren't making progress when looking for a new role, you know, this should provide some food for thought. Some of these things come, you know, more naturally than others, and some can be learned. You know, some simply aren't that obvious. For example, being able to present to customers is something that not a lot of people we speak with are particularly comfortable or, you know, good at doing. But if you look at presenting and public speaking as being a desirable trait and can take a course and improve that, you're adding, you know, a skill, um, you know, as well as demonstrating the, the soft skills that show a motivation to actually improving yourself and developing. You know, that's inc an incredibly desirable sequence of events to have in a candidate. You know, someone evaluating their own weaknesses and working on improving them under their own steam. You know, in terms of, of higher up the list, I'm certainly not suggesting you all enroll in business school to get, you know, to come to grips with the finer details of what you do. But, you know, I would suggest speaking with your line manager and trying to establish, you know, the impact of your decisions or why processes are being done in a certain way. You know, helping to understand the business decision making process will give you a better insight and improve the way you see the project. Now, so I think we've covered the dynamics landscape in terms of what professionals have reported to us, you know, but it's also crucial to take stock of what Microsoft themselves see as being important to you, um, as important. And, you know, I'm delighted to be able to welcome Nancy Tandy to today's event. Uh, Nancy's going to talk us through the ways you can stand out as a Microsoft Dynamics candidate. And uh, over to you, Nancy. Thanks, Michael. Uh, thank you for having me today. Let's start by answering the question, how do you stand out as a Microsoft Dynamics candidate? It's pretty simple. Make sure you are trained and certified. The world is rapidly changing. IT and development professionals and the organizations that are looking for people with digital and cloud skills must be ready to meet the challenges of today's economy. What's required for today's job isn't what was needed even five years ago. In fact, the average life of a skill today is less than five years. To be successful these days, it's important to keep growing your skill set, experience, and abilities. Dynamics 365 certification offer IT professionals an edge in this cloud-based and connected world. Job seekers and seasoned professionals alike can use Dynamics 365 certifications to help advance their career in their existing organization and role or in new roles. Earn recognition and validate their techno technical knowledge and abilities in current and future industry job roles. 
An organization can use certifications to identify the talent they need and build the technical skills of their workforce. So how do you use all the resources available and set yourself on a learning journey? The first thing to understand is that everyone has a unique journey. Your desired path towards tech intensity defines your learning journey. Depending on your goals, you will identify different training needs. Some learners might need foundational understanding of the technology. Think about fundamentals training. Or you may need, you may have specific roles in mind that need specific technical skills to be successful in your job. If that's the case, think about the role-based training. Once you have identified your training needs, you can create your learning path, validate knowledge, and get the recognition you deserve. Next slide. Thanks. Let's talk a little bit about the different ways to learn and the learning path. <clears throat> to help create a robust learning journey, we offer a number of training options to fit different styles and help learners prepare for certification. Microsoft's training's content is created based on real business needs and is aligned to roles to help distinguish a clear learning path. These learning experiences can be combined for optimal results. So there's several different things we have. We start with what we call our self-paced learning on Microsoft Learn. It helps you build practical job skills with easily accessible, free, self-paced courses. This is a self-guided learning. Um, it's really nice. Uh, it's free to everyone. Uh, there, have, there are clear course descriptions so you know what you're getting into and, and how it will help you learn. Then we have what we call our Microsoft training events. Uh, these combine traditional presentation-based conferences with demos, discussions, and practical, applicable workshops and hands-on coding experiences. These experiences kind of put learners in touch with others, so there's additional benefit of learning with peers. Then we also have what we call our instructor-led training, or this is our, our traditional kind of classroom style training. Using Microsoft official courses taught by Microsoft certified trainers to access personalized deep technical training. All of these training options can help you prepare for achieving a Microsoft certification. This is the foundation of skills, validation, and recognition. And recognition. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a deep dive on our Microsoft Learn platform. From beginners to advanced learners, Microsoft Learn will help you build technical skills with up-to-date content, and it's the place to start your learning journey to explore and learn how to use Microsoft technologies. Uh, with Microsoft Learn, discover a comprehensive collection of training options, choosing from either self-paced learning, instructor learning, and certifications to help you master technical skills in a style that fits you best. There are uh, hands-on labs within Learn. Uh, it helps you personalize your experience and stay motivated. You earn points. You can track your level where you're at. You unlock achievements. And you can also easily share your learning progress with your manager or colleagues. The learning paths are updated and aligned to roles and products or services and can help quickly advance skills and help prepare for certification. Microsoft Learn is a great place to start to advance your technical skills. Microsoft events provide unique upskilling experience, uh, combining presentations with demonstrations, discussions, and hands-on workshops. Uh, get the latest insight and skills from technology leaders and practitioners shaping the future of cloud, data, business intelligence, teamwork, and productivity. You can immerse, your, immerse yourself with the latest tools, tech, and experiences that matter and hear the latest updates and ideas directly from Microsoft experts. Uh, Microsoft Dynamics 365 Training Day is our Microsoft uh, Dynamics event. And you'll find the latest technology experiences and, and creative solutions. You can connect with the community to share new trends and partake in the knowledge sharing. Events uh, content is aligned to the learning paths that we have on Microsoft Learn. 
for a streamlined learning experience. After the event, you would like to pursue a desired learning path with digital or classroom training, and you can work towards your certification. All right, let's talk a little bit about our Microsoft Learning Partners, um, our ILT content is what we call it. Um, our trusted learning partners offer a breadth of training solutions to suit your learning needs. You can combine online, in-person, and self-paced learning with hands-on labs and trainers with local market relevance, expertise, and language. So our uh, classroom training uh, with our learning partners is uh, a great place if you like that traditional, more uh, hands-on with a, a proctor or a trainer experience. A Microsoft Learning Partner will work with you to assess you and your plans and will deliver a customized training plan to build the technical expertise that you need, uh, providing personalized attention and support to help you meet your learning objectives. So currently, all of our Microsoft Learning, learning Partners are delivering virtual uh, trainings for everybody during COVID. All right, let's talk a little bit about Microsoft certifications. Uh, so we have, uh, we heard from our industry and market uh, feedback on how certifications should really assess more than what you know uh, to show, to show you really applying what you know to solve real, real business challenges. So we designed testing in order to evaluate some key performance criteria. Uh, we look at the ability to solve problems. We look at the ability to integrate information from multiple sources and being able to implement solutions within business constraints and achieve specific outcomes. Our exams and certifications put an emphasis on demonstrating skills rather than just answering questions about them. Each certification has performance-based labs mapping to what people do every day, demonstrating how to use the technology. We have crafted different certification types, each one to validate different aspects of how you use technology to solve business problems. So we have fundamentals, which really validates your foundational understanding with mixed concepts and applied learning of Microsoft technologies. They're, they're really a springboard into deeper role-based learning paths and certifications. No experience is required in this area to do a fundamentals. And a fundamental certification is valid for, for forever. There's no expiration date on it. Role-based certifications focus on the solutions rather than just podcasts or products, excuse me, to validate technical skills required to perform industry job roles on Microsoft platforms and technologies. There are multiple levels of the role-based certifications uh, from associate to expert. And we also have some specialty, which I'm going to talk about next. Our specialty uh, certifications really validate deep technical skills and the ability uh, to manage industry solutions, including third-party third solutions on or with Microsoft platforms. For example, we have an IoT uh, specialty with our Azure. Uh, you, there's no associate or expert levels in the specialty. So if you're interested in learning more about uh, certifications, head over to Microsoft.com WAC certifications on Microsoft Learn to explore all of the different certifications that we have. And then we've also partnered with Measure Up, which is our official practice test uh, vendor. And you can see all of our practice exams by visiting aka.ms WAC MS practice tests and you'll be able to see all of the different um, practice tests available there. So I wanted to just kind of highlight uh, our complete view of the business application certifications for both Dynamics 365 and Power Platform across the role-based fundamental and specialty types. For more details around each certification, you can go and visit the AKA link at the bottom here, at Dynamics 365 certifications. But as you can see on the left side, we have what we call our customer engagement certifications. On the right side is really focused on our finance and opera operation apps uh, solution and certifications. And at the bottom in the purple color is our power platform 
or excuse me, the orange color is our Power Platform uh, certifications. So I wanted to give you a quick heads up on how certifications work now during COVID-19. Pearson View, which is our testing vendor, is operating with limited, limited capacity at most test centers. Appointment availability is limited, of course, due to social distancing precautions and varies by, lo, lo, by location. So make sure that you contact them. But they are uh, expanding and have a lot of online learning there you can secure testing from the comfort of your home. Uh, during this time, there's no rescheduling or cancellation fees but you should definitely uh, check out the Pearson View website uh, for the most up-to-date and And finally, I just wanted to share with you how, uh, how to achieve a Microsoft certification if you have been displaced in the workforce due to COVID-19. On June 30th, uh, Microsoft announced an initiative to help people worldwide acquire new skills for, uh, for the COVID-19 economy and beyond. Using data to identify roles and, that are most in demand, such as software developer or data analyst or IT administrator. We have access to free training um, to help develop skills in the that are aligned to these in-demand jobs and earn a certification to help you stand out and get back into the workforce. You can schedule your discounted certification exam, um, which is around $15 for, and that's in the US dollars, um, by December 31st, 2020, and take the exam by March 31st, 2021. So there's still lots of time to take advantage of this great offer. For the most update information, you probably want to visit our blog on uh, Microsoft.com, WAC, uh, Microsoft Learn. All right. Thank you uh, very much for that, Nancy. I appreciate it. And that's some amazing insight. You know, so to summarize and, and give you what I think are perhaps the main takeaways from this presentation, you know, first of all, I'd say that soft skills are essential. They're perhaps the hardest to be able to really demonstrate. Organizations can put you through a technical competency test, but that's way more difficult to do for things such as communication skills or a desire to learn and work with new products. You know, obviously your learning path is one huge way to unquestionably demonstrate this. You know, so look at certifications and try and work towards getting them. Uh, this year we'll see a massive rise in those studying for, for certs. So you'll stand out for all the wrong reasons in the next 12 months or beyond if you don't have them on your resume. If you don't have the financial resources to invest in them and your employer isn't willing to contribute, you know, my guess is that um, you know, that may be why you're perhaps looking to move on anyway, but look to other learning resources and, and really try and be able to show that you're an active part of the Microsoft community rather than just someone who clocks off at 5 p.m. And when you put the time and effort into developing yourself, uh, you know, that needs to be reflected on your application. So make sure the skills listed on a job spec are included in your resume. You know, it can be a five or 10 minute job, just comparing the two and making sure they match up before you hit send. And I'm sure if you're sick of your current role and, and you know, anxious to move on and, and either earn more money, tackle new products or challenges, then, Getting that dream opportunity is worth a little bit uh, extra time. You know, I'm honestly amazed when I see candidates complain that they weren't invited for an interview despite their experience. Then you look at their resume and it, and it doesn't have the skills the hiring manager has been told to find. You know, most employers don't have the time or the inclination to try and guess what you might know. You know, it's not their, their job or duty to be mind readers. You know, they just need to sift through a pile of resumes and invite the best of those to the interview. So, you know, please, if I can give you one, you know, major piece of advice, make sure this isn't an area that you're falling down on. And, you know, that's all for me today, although I'm happy to take any questions you have in a moment or so. Um, anything I'm un unable to answer, I'll be more than happy to connect with you and get back to you with an answer, you know, away from this forum. You know, my contact details will be displayed in a moment if you wish to connect with me privately. Um, you know, and, and before we move on to that, the survey is available completely free of charge from our website, uh, nigelfrank.com. 
you know, it's under the market reports in the header there and goes into much more detail than, you know, we've been able to cover during this short presentation. And it's a truly fantastic resource which covers salaries around the globe as well as more trends and issues affecting those, you know, working with Dynamics. You know, and, and our website itself is another great resource, of course. We have an incredible wealth of information on our blog, as well as the latest vacancies and the option to subscribe to our jobs by email, where you can get the latest opportunities uh, delivered directly to your inbox. But hopefully, you know, that's given you a, a little bit of time to think of any potential questions. So we'll move on to the Q&A section. And lastly, before, before we head into this Q&A, if anyone does have feedback on today's session, you know, please don't hesitate to share it with us. Uh, we will be sending you all a detailed follow-up email, a, a recording um, of this presentation, and a link to download the survey as well. But you know, feel free to send us your feedback directly. Um, in the meantime, uh, does anyone have any questions about anything we've covered today or, or any issues that affect you as a candidate on the, on the job market? All right. Um, you know, maybe maybe to get things going, there's a there are a few questions in the uh, in the chat box, and a couple of you have asked about the follow up. So uh, yes, uh, if you have registered for this, then you will get a follow up email with a link to the presentation and to the salary survey if you haven't downloaded it already. Um, you know, and then of course, if you have follow-up questions that aren't answered here, you can you can check in with us as well. But you will get follow-up. Um, let's see. Uh, from Laura, the entire presentation uh, focused on the technical and functional engineers, developers, DBA types. Uh, nothing on the professional Microsoft sales reps, um, AEs that evangelize Microsoft B365. Um, you know, Zach or Nancy, can you maybe comment on on those uh, particular career paths? Um, yeah, I'll just say that yes, this these were technical. Most of our certifications are around technical training, but most of our sales reps uh, do have technical backgrounds. So, uh, if you're interested in that Microsoft sales rep type A path, you know, we have various levels of of sales folks but all of them, you know, we do require technical training. And so I would suggest, you know, get started on Microsoft Learn in the area of dynamics that you're most interested in and that you would like to become a sales rep and, and get immersed in it. You know, fundamentals is a great way to start. It gives you a broad overview of all the different areas of dynamics um, and, and come to the table with, um, you know, the knowledge around dynamics. And I think that will be super helpful for you. Awesome. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, Jesse had a question about, uh, you know, how, how can you get help for an interview? So, you know, for, for us as a recruiting agency, you know, Nigel Frank, that's, that's part of our job. So all you, all you have to do is, is contact us and, and ask us, you know, we're, we're happy to help you. Um, you know, and there's my contact information on the screen there. And, and, you know, I'm also happy to put you in touch with one of our senior recruiters as well. So, you know, thanks for that. And then let's see, anyone else have any questions they've, they've thought of? Um, I'm seeing a, a question around the practice exams. So it's measure up, excuse me, measureup.com. Uh, you can go to, to their website, measureup.com and, and then search for whichever practice exam that you're thinking of doing. So. Um, we're, we're most of the dynamics role-based and fundamentals have a practice exams and we're working really hard to get the, the brand new ones that we've just released um, to have a practice exam too. So within the next few weeks to the next few months, all of the dynamics uh, exams will have, have that practice exam. Awesome, thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, see a, I see a question here from uh, Anna. Just in regards to, I have eight Microsoft certifications, um, and the biggest problem is the uh, in the interviews is lack of my experience. I mean, Anna, as Mike mentioned earlier on, please, please do reach out to us, and we're happy to coach and tailor your resume to 
the customers in the right manner um, to ensure that it is a bit more enticing for them to obviously get the interview scheduled. Um, but then we can obviously walk and talk you through interview preparation to make sure that you don't just have that first interview, it goes to the next stages and ultimately hopefully get you employed with said customer. So please do reach out to, uh, to Michael or myself to get something scheduled on our recruiters to discuss that in more depth. Awesome, thank you, Zach. And Nancy, there's a question there on uh, the project management certification or cr credentials. Do you see that? Is that something you can maybe address? Yeah, we don't have, project management is a, a new one that's kind of come into our view. Uh, I believe we're working on a new role-based um, certification for that, but it's not out yet. But there is still training on Microsoft.com Learn, so I would go there and uh, go through, you know, the free online skilling and at least, you know, be, you know, get get that part of the training done, and then look for the future where we'll have project management. It'll either be its own certification or it'll be within some of the other role-based certifications. I don't know the plans yet on that one, so um, just keep checking back. Okay, awesome. And Zach, there's a question there about, um, you know, how many years of experience do you need to be considered senior? Um, what, what would you what would you say to that? Uh, it, it really does. I think I was from RD. Um, yeah. But I, I really, it does really depend on, um, you know, each role and each customer's perception of it. You know, in the actual salary survey itself or the salary guide, um, we, we've classified senior in our guide from a salary standpoint at nine plus years. Um, but again, some... Uh, customers are negotiable on the job title and you know if they feel you bring a certain level of acumen and talent to the table then they're happy to probably consider offering that senior job title as such but as per our salary guide it's looking at nine plus years but as I said some customers may have flexibility on that to ensure that you can be attracted to them as an organization. Great. Thank you. Hey, Michael there's a question around what certification are employers looking for so just based on my knowledge of working with certain dynamics partners right now, I know there, um, there's a lack of like functional consultants around the finance area. So finance, supply chain management, supply chain management, manufacturing. I know there's a, a huge demand for, um, for functional consultants and developers, solution architects, and that side of dynamics. So if you have that type of background um, or have knowledge around finance and supply chain, I think that's a great area to go into. You're hundred percent right, Nancy. Every customer is screaming out for the finance specialist, supply chain specialist right now. It seems to be the, the in, in demand skill set today. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. And, and then Nancy, there was a question um, around you know, Microsoft and what they're, what they're currently doing to support uh, remote work with COVID and, and the new world as we keep hearing over and over again. Can you, can you maybe touch on that? Yeah, I mean, we've been rapidly expanding our team capabilities uh, to make working remote very seamless. Uh, I think COVID has definitely changed the way, you know, companies will work uh, in the future. And, and, I, and I think, you know, it's just impacted how companies are, are starting to think about what, what the future is going to look like. Um, but, you know, working, you know, Microsoft Teams, you know, we have the video conferencing, screen share, custom backgrounds, together mode, uh, file sharing, you know, it's very secure, uh, very private. Uh, I think it's just a great, it's a great tool. And, and again, if you're also interested in getting training on teams, I know this is a dynamics area, but um, there is definitely some, um, you know, implementation and connection between teams and dynamics. So there is training on uh, Microsoft Learn for that. Um, but yeah, I, I think that um, it, it's definitely, we're, we're seeing a, 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 a transformation right now in how companies are thinking and how they're working. And COVID has proven that you know, companies can, you know, have employees working at home and survive and be profitable. And um, so I think that's, that's a huge uh, a shift in what we'll see in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Microsoft Teams has become, you know, integral to our business at, at Frank Recruitment Group. We use it. Uh, what, what would you say, Zach, is it 10 times a day we're on Teams? 
at this point. Yeah, I think it's actually <laughs> brought better collaboration, to be honest with you. Um, Absolutely. And and it's quite nice that meetings now no longer overrun because you can just uh, set the agenda and move on quite quickly. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I'm seeing another question around the remote jobs. I, you know, I think it, it depends on the industry, but I think in as far as like the software industry grows, I, I think you'll see the the shift in, hey, workers are no longer required to be, you know, in the office. And, and it gives that flexibility of being able to hire people around the world that have the skill set needed um, and for them to be able to work like in a Redmond, but living in you know, another country. And, and I'm seeing that, you know, definitely in, in what Microsoft is doing. And I think it'll, it'll, you know, go into other industries as well that are similar to that. You know, you'll still have traditional industries where they have to be in person, but I think it's definitely opened up uh, the air. A lot of companies are, are seeing that they can, they can have and hire people in, in air, different areas of the world and find those people that have that skill set that they need. And so it's, it's definitely opening up a lot of opportunities. And Nancy, just on that point, how, how do you think, or well, how are Microsoft supporting that whole remote world and you know trying to push customers away from having, say, the technical needs on site? Because historically, every organization wants the tech team on site where most probably they don't really need to be. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm not sure I, I can answer that uh, <laughs> uh, as I'm not necessarily in, in, in that area, but I, I, I do think that being able to, to work remote and, and the technical skills and, and is definitely changing us. I'm not sure I can fully answer that question though. Fair enough. Okay, there's a, there's a question from Joe on the importance of SQL skills and well, for, first of all, I, I would imagine, you know, that it depends on the role, of course, but, you know, with the you know, prevalence of, of data and, and um, you know, how it's become, you know, just synonymous with almost everything, I imagine, you know, and any database skills would be valuable, but, you know, Zach or Nancy, maybe you can expand on that. In, in terms of the, uh, in terms of the importance of SQL skills, you say, Mike? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're seeing SQL being, you know, a more prevalent skill set that is required. Um, it's more one where it's not necessarily a pure essential requirement, but it's a, it's a nice addition to have on top of, if that makes sense. Um, so I think if you're purely, a, you know, a SQL DBA, I think if, as long as you've got some attributes around other areas as well, that's definitely going to help your, your case per se. Um, but, you know, SQL DBAs are becoming uh, a, a necessary skill set but i think it's somebody with a blend of other attributes also okay yeah fair enough and and i'm not sure if there's a team's certification now bob but maybe nancy do you know um yes so i'm trying to think what's been released and what hasn't um there there's a a team's administrative administrator associate um, that I know of. And I think there's like this teamwork administrative associate certification. Um, there's, there's a couple in market today and there's a bunch that are coming quickly. So um, again, and teams isn't necessarily my area of expertise, but I would, I would recommend that you go to microsoft.com whack learn slash certifications and check them out because the the SQL stuff, um, the team stuff, all of that is all there. And again, I'm I'm a Power Platform Dynamics person, uh, so I don't know. I, I you know I have teammates that handle that, and and I I know there are certifications. I just don't know how many, but I do know there's some additional ones coming. Got it. Thank you. And then Anna, you, Anna mentions you know you're a certified Teams administrator, and and there aren't too many jobs for it yet. I mean, I, I I would venture to say that there there will be. Um, I remember giving a presentation um, when when COVID kind of first became um, a you know a big issue, and you know the the number of Teams users from March to April uh, I believe doubled, uh, and there were literally uh, you know thirty or forty million uh, additional Teams users. So. You know, as a as a vital tool to business, it's it's become, you know, obviously very important. And you know, I imagine there will be more and more jobs related to teams. But you know, that's um, I guess that answers the question about uh, certifications around teams as well. 
Win, I don't know, Anna. I, I, I wish I, I, I knew, but um, you know, absolutely stay. We'll stay in touch with you, and, and please reciprocate, and, and we'll definitely keep, uh, keep you posted on what we're seeing in the market since you know we're we're doing this, you know, obviously day in and day out. Uh, let's see. There's a pretty good question there, Nancy from JD. Uh, yeah. So. Um, I saw this is interesting. Um, so I'm not sure if you're asking about the the actual strategy of the product um, or the certifications. Uh, we we are aligned, you know, all of our certifications are aligned to the product, but it's it's a role base. Um, so we do support you know, our products and our training and certification, if that's what you're asking, I'm not quite sure. He added what. another comment there about it saying it's uh, about the product evolution. Um, yeah, so I'm still not quite sure um, what the question is then. Um, I mean, we, we, do, we do support, you know, all of our training and certifications, like I said, supports all of our products. And so every six months as our products, you know, are evolved and the technology continues to change, you know, we update all of our training and certifications. So I think that's what you're asking. And it, it's, it's not, I apologize. Okay, fair enough. Um, any other questions? Mike, I know there were a couple sent in earlier. Do you want to look at some of those? Yeah, yeah. There were, we we were sent a question earlier about you know the uh, obviously the impact of COVID is is at the forefront of our thoughts and you know it was a question about how COVID has changed the hiring cycle. You know, I, I think at Nigel Frank we found that it's much much faster now. You know, it's it's uh, typically been reduced from an average of around six weeks down to four. You know, that's from when one of our clients first, um, you know, gives us a job search to work on, and and then you know, success us successfully placing a candidate with them, so that's around a 33 percent uh, reduction in time. Uh, interviews now are typically average two stages and can be done um, in a much more streamlined fashion using either Teams or Zoom. Um, you know, so the turnaround time is much quicker and the process is easier for everyone as well. And uh, I believe, Zach, that, you know, over 80% of the placements we've made in the last quarter involved uh, no face-to-face -face interviews at all, if, if, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> I think it could be even a little bit more. Yeah, which is a, a massive change. I wonder if that's going to be the new normal now. I think it might be to try and get top talent snapped up off the market quicker. I, ma I imagine it would be. Yeah, definitely. Um, th there was another one here. You know, what do you expect the new normal to look like when it comes to hiring for technology or this technology? Um, I think what we'll probably see is the same thing as other businesses will. You know, probably that more working, um, remote working environment is obviously going to be the, the primary change. Um, I think the, the knock-on effect of COVID-19 and how that remote world has come more prevalent is going to be interesting how companies adopt and adapt to that. Um, a lot of primary childcare is carried out by women and home working will allow more parents a wider choice. So I think we'll see a real leveling up when it comes to diversity across the gender. Um, the digital skills gap is widening and the industry desperately needs people that may come from people working almost entirely from home. Um, maybe a little cottage industry of its own, so to speak as such. But I think yeah. we're going to get a lot of people returning back to employment that haven't been able to work for a period of time due to you know, families growing as such. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, maybe time for this one last question, which is actually for you, Zach, from Basel. It looks like a good question. Um, you know, what would be the best combination of skill sets to have as a functional consultant? Uh, yeah, no, uh, Basil, I obviously don't know your background from, a, you know, an FNO or CEBC standpoint. So maybe if you can type in there, that would be beneficial. But, you know, ultimately, I think candidates who have a focus on one specific industry 
um, is definitely going to be beneficial. Um, we, we are seeing candidates with more of a hybrid finance and trade and logistics supply chain background being uh, a, a definitely high demand skill set. But, you know, as Nancy mentioned earlier on, finance, supply chain, um, consultants are top of the demand chart for every single organization today you know logistics is a key thing for organizations and obviously finance will never not be a key thing um and, right. you know ensuring that's going to speed up is is the key part for everyone so i guess hybrid between supply chain and finance is going to be uh, a key one excellent thank you um all right well we we hit the hour mark and you know if there are any other questions at all you know i, I certainly encourage you guys to reach out to us uh, directly and we're happy to help you nancy i, I truly appreciate your help and, and time with this do you, do you would you like to say anything um wrap things up about microsoft learn or anything like that oh i just want to thank you for for having me today uh, i really enjoyed it and uh, hopefully uh, folks can can get to microsoft learn and you know, get the skills that they need and get certified and, and good luck in, in your job search. And I hope everyone uh, gets hired. <laughs> thank you. Uh, as do we. And Zach, thank you for your support and your help. Anytime. Any final words? And we'll sign off. No, I appreciate it. Um, no, happy holidays to everyone and all. And um, I'm sure that this is beneficial use for everyone who's been attending. And hopefully we can get this shared out with people who weren't able to make it today. Absolutely. Thank you all. We, we appreciate your time and please do reach out if you if you need anything, need any help or, or have any questions that we weren't able to get to. All right. Take care. Stay safe and happy holidays.